Just keep work and social lives separate. We're not doing a good job of that. No, I'm doing a terrible job. Welcome back to another Schooner and Hot Beer Review. We're sitting here with the Green Beacon Windjammer IPA. It's a 6% 60 IBU American style uh, Indian Pale Ale. Yep. Which we found out generally means it's probably going to be a little bit darker, apparently uh, more flavorful. More full flavor. Uh, so it's supposed to be a juicy citrus uh, and piney. I just thought about making uh, a joke with about firm bitterness. <laughs> kind of, yep. About um, uh, the, it being darker and more fruity than its English counterparts, much like the Americans are towards Brits. Yes. In, in association to English IPS. Yes. Yeah. American people and English people. Very different. There you go. Hmm. Darker. Would you like to continue on your. This is, uh, this is the this 100% is, of the information we found this about. This is all the. Life. Yes. From Green Beacon themselves. Juicy citrus and pine with a firm bitterness. Mm-hmm. Um, look, whenever they say juicy, I'm always down for it. Yeah. So let's give this a go. It does make me apprehensive because it is a buzzword that they use on a lot of beers. It is. It's pretty buzzy as well. So, but anyway. Wow, that beer's so dark. I mean, it is. It's pretty pale. Yeah. It's, it's got like light. an amber tone at the top of it. Anyway. Let's give it a big old go. Did you smell it first? I don't remember if I did or not. I did. And it smelled divine. It tastes divine. Mm. It is just bitter from the start as well. Yeah, it is. It is bitter all the way through. Yep. Yeah, initial sip. Just unnecessary <laughs> amounts of bitterness and I love it. And it just follows you with the, uh, all the way through the flavor. Or all the way into the aftertaste, even. Yeah, that bitterness doesn't go away. Kind of hits and it sticks sticks in there. And that's what I like about. But that's an a IPA. good. That's a good IPA. Yeah, where the bitterness does not give a give in, give on. Definitely a, getting like the juicy citrus flavors and and the firm bitterness. Um, and it is pretty dry on the aftertaste as well. Yeah, it ends pretty quickly. Um, um, as it, in like the, a lot of the flavour will s- stops pretty soon after as soon as you've swallowed it yeah as soon as um, you swallowed you're just left with aftertaste yeah and it is actually so it doesn't, really doesn't good. linger but I would say it's sessionable as far as an IPA is concerned this is something I could definitely have a lot of but at 6% it's probably something I shouldn't have a lot of I wouldn't say it's that sessionable I feel like it's a like a one or two of IPA but also one or two of at yeah. six percent, you kind of it's quite a few. You're yeah. a, you're getting there. Maybe that bitterness might get a bit much. And somewhere else, I'm using your second. Who knows where you, where'd you oh, put it? Hey, Posty. We'll be right back after these short deliveries. Just so we're clear, this was not the package that was delivered. Thanks. Alrighty. Anyway, where were we? Something about this beer being really good. Uh, yeah, I think I'm, I think I'm maybe coming around to your. Uh, are you saying that it's maybe not that sessionable? This is kind of what I want when I want to have an IPA. It's refreshing as hell though. Yes. Jesus, refreshing. It's, I mean, pretty well anything on a day like today is refreshing. Yeah, if it's hot and dry outside, anything cold and wet's going to go well. Yep. All right. Let's start with sessionability. What did you put down? I just went with a three out of five. Um, you know what's funny? You went two out of I five. I went a two. And we're, we just spent the first part of this video talking about how I think it's sessionable. I but think that you kind of got lost in the fact that it was a first sip of something cold on a hot day. Yeah, it just tasted great. So you're just like, oh, this is amazing. And now that you've kind of had the... Yep. That's a truck. There's a lot of interruptions. We picked this a episode. really good time to do this. Yeah. Oh, well. Um, <laughs> well I lost my road train of thought. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Was that funny, Sally? No, it wasn't, I know. No, that's fair. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. I got lost in the initial flavor. Like, it's a great beer, and I just kind of put that, at, oh, yeah, that means it's super sessionable. It really isn't. The bitterness is going to get too much for yeah. me. That's why I put it as The savoriness thing. now, I can just feel yeah. it in my mouth. Oh, thanks, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> it 
there's just a big bitter hoppy mouth feel yeah. right now. I haven't had a sip for a, I don't know a minute or two. I could yeah. time it, but I'm not going to. No, we could check it on there. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going yeah. to. But so yeah, it's just it's not a sessionable beer. I would get this either to start off or I don't know maybe finish off if I was going to have one Oof. or two beers. I don't know if I do it, if I do it as like a nightcap to finish. I think that's an opener for me because it's so bitter. I'd I'd be concerned that after a session on maybe some other beers, mm-hmm. you hit this one up, and because you've been drinking something that's a much lighter, like something more easy, easy you're drinking, the bitterness will be accentuated. Yeah, you're gonna hit the bitterness, and you'll be like, oh, okay. Well, sometimes that's a lot of fun. Oh no, maybe that's a good way Make to end the night. Make something feel way more bitter than what it actually is. Alrighty, uh, bitterness five out of five. <laughs> like, yeah, it's bitter. Wasn't it's, gonna be anything else. It's great, mm. but it's like it's a good bitterness as well. It's not like you met with. Uh, really conflicting bitter notes when you no, it's kind really of opened up with a that real strong bitterness, flavor. but it's still not harsh. Mm-hmm. Um, it's you're definitely not going to miss it. It's very noticeable. I think this is going to be a great IPA for people that maybe don't like a lot of IPAs um, because the bitterness is there. But <laughs> thank you. <laughs> because the bitterness is there, but it's not too um, not too harsh on it. You might be able to yeah uh, go for a full schooner mm-hmm. or. It is on the higher say, side of like of the IBUs. Yeah, it's up to sixty. To what we've had, yeah. so at sixty, yeah, so it is pretty up there. Like, you can you can taste it. Mm. It's there. Mm. You can't ignore it. No. Um, aftertaste, I've just given it a four out of five. Mm. Uh, I really like the aftertaste. Yeah. Like the only downside is it is a bit dry. Yeah. Um, that's that's right. Which I is I put mine not as a the two. worst thing. That's what I cut mine down to. I. IPAs aren't really known for their wonderful aftertaste because they do end bitter. bitter that's the whole um, point. Yeah, that's the idea. Uh, so it's just down to two just because for me, I, I like a full flavoured finish, something that kind of lingers a bit longer. In this, I feel because it's so dry, it just drops off and then you're just left with the bitter notes. Mm-hmm. And although it's not bad. It is do you like it? There's just other things I prefer. Yeah. You, yeah. We've, yeah. You've definitely explained your stance on aftertaste before. Yep, yeah, I'm going to and explain it again and again and again. And you guys are going to enjoy it. The uh, flavor overall. You're going to sit through it. <laughs> uh, five out of five. I, just, I really like it. Yep. Big bitter notes. Uh, citrus, uh, citrus flavors are just sitting there. You notice them. Yep. Everything that it says it is, you get. Yeah. Right. It's juicy. It's bitter. And it's a little bit dry. Yeah. Uh, that's that they, bit, like the, what they've said it is is exactly what it is. I just gave so, it a four just because uh, just the aftertaste. It's just notes. a bit too much. That's, for you. that's just the only thing. Um, it's still a great beer. It's fantastic. Uh, overall, I gave it a four, and you also gave it a four. Yeah, because it's not perfect. Like it's nah. pretty damn great, but it, ain't it sure is real close. It's good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The only thing, I and I'm not gonna mark this down because it's not sessionable it is a proper ipa it's just yeah. you're not gonna really session on a lot of ipas yeah. mm-hmm. i will i will write that note down yeah thanks telly That's... oh whoa 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 mm-hmm. it's about all right it's his favorite thing to say Corey had a very interesting ranking and i feel he needs to explain himself as to why he's put it above the beetlejuice look <sighs> hmm. I love me that Black Ops Beetlejuice, <laughs> but I can get this anytime I like, and I don't know, I'm hoping that Black Ops do another release of that this year. I believe they did the year before last, and then they did it, so it might just be a seasonal yearly thing, yeah. but I can get this anytime I want, and it's just not as good as a Balta XPA or a GOAT, just because they are, yeah, they're basically still made it to your top five three session there. abilities it's in your top three so yeah. this at this stage it's making it to season four at if this we don't stage change it is that system um no. yeah no that system's staying yeah <laughs> i think as of as, as of right now as of right now it's that staying. is not changing at no. all um but yeah that's basically it obviously you kind of got to for me a, a limited release is like they're yeah, great, not, yeah. they're awesome, they're like the cream of the crop of brewing. It's just, they've put a lot of effort into making this one-off beer. Yeah, it's there and it's gone. But then the downside is, yeah. after a while, you, don't you get kind any more. of, yeah. You, yeah, you can't get any more. Yeah. And that's the only downfall of it. Uh, and you... Mine's fourth. Um, it's about the, like, we weren't that impressed with the half-mast. 
No, it's like it fell short on a lot of on a lot of fronts, and the Passion Victim is just one of those beers that it's like. Yeah, like it, yeah. obviously, Passion Passion Victim was a really good beer. Yeah, but it's the it's one of those beers that you're not gonna hit up every no. other day, no. at least in my and clearly your opinion, it's yeah. not an everyday beer. Whereas. <laughs> This is one of those IPAs that I'd probably just go to every time I felt like an IPA. Mm. Like, that's... Yeah, this will be my go-to This IPA is just now. kind of a quintessential IPA. It delivers on everything you want out of an IPA. You get bitterness, you get a bit of fruit, mm. you get a big old aftertaste that is like questionable whether you enjoy it or not. Yeah. But well, ultimately, no, I do. Not questionable for you. Uh, anyway, um, closing notes, recommend it. Go get it. Good stuff. Thanks to... Uh, to Green Beacon for passing yeah. this on to us. That's pretty wicked. You guys are awesome. That's very nice of you. And obviously, thanks to uh, Porters for the privilege of getting hooked up with Green yeah. Beacon, kind of. Thanks for being the guy that works. Thanks for being the guy that introduced us. Anyway, we've been screwing it hot. Cheers. Cheers.